Um, I, I have some other questions probably later on, but um, is there is there a sign off? Like, is there a, a process of sign offs on these contracts as to who reviews them for final say off, and what's that process? Um, that's where I, this is under the CAI uh, contract, so that uh, that's executed at the state level. Uh, the mechanism that these statement of works were done under, and, and the state procurement holds that contract, and the United States that. Contract. Hey Jeff, hold on one second, if you don't mind, because we're bringing up procurement. I'd like to ask Ms. Thompson if you'll come on up and take that other seat, please. All right, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. So, with that said, previously it was. The only review on these uh, were to make sure that there were no terms and conditions that conflicted with uh, state procurement regulations and those, and um, to uh, for, for the fiscal side of it. Now, with the, the new... So, so who signs off on that? So who whose eyes look at this, and who signs to say, I've seen this, I'm okay with this? Who? who Previously, who are... DFNA, director, who? There, there's four signature blocks okay. on those statements of work. Uh, CII signs off on those, the provider that's offering CIA. the service. CIA. CAI. CAI, and that stands for? Uh, Computer Aid Inc. Computer what? Computer Aid Inc, I believe. Which they're one of the contractors, right? Okay, I'm talking about state employees. So I'm saying state employees, who signs off on okay. There's two vendor signatures and two state signatures on okay. the statements of work. Those two state signatures are a representative from the agency, and that, and that could be anyone from a, a division you know, director to a CIO to a director. So it depends on the agency on who they choose to authorize to, to sign that. Which agency? DHS, DIS, Insurance Department? Whoever is requesting the resource. Whoever is requesting the resource. Right. So on these specific, we can get that. Can that be provided to this committee? On, on the specific contracts that we're talking about here for the system. Yes. Oh. I'd like to see these signatures on this. Okay. Yes, if you would compile that list and just send it to Karen and Karen will push it out to all the members of the committee and the other members of the request it. Please. Um, and then the other thing is is that once these are and I understand you said we could reach an agreement with the vendor, which is why the time was shortened, which is why we chose to do the staff augmentation contract. Am I getting that correct? Yes. Is that why we chose to do staff augmentation contract versus RFP? That's right. The one, the one time to do a new RFP, so the staff augment contract. And what staff. caused that time? What caused that shortened time? Well, what, what factors played into causing that shortened period? So there was a there was a shortened time to begin with because of the Affordable Care Act saying you had to have a new system in place by January of fourteen. So it was already a tight time frame. And then when oh, we let me ask you a sure. question, just so I so I can follow your train of thought here. So so Affordable Care Act passes. And they say you have to have this new system in place by January 1, 2014. And right. so when did we start this process? That would be 2012? Yes, I, I think uh, the work on it began before that, probably in 2011. Okay. Part, part of what we had to do at all states were in this position, we had to wait until the federal government gave us enough guidance on what the system had to do before you could even write up an RFP. So is there, do you have any idea when that was, when, when we kind of got the go light from the CMS on the date? I'm just trying to look yeah, at the time. Yeah, I'll have to find out. I don't, I don't think there was necessarily a particular date, but at a certain point, I think we knew we had enough that we could grab, or thought we had enough that we could write an RFP. And I can find out when we started to work on the RFP. Yeah, because here's my, my dilemma here is that we have a time frame and we made it in my estimation, what seems to be a poor decision to do the staff augmentation route. I would say that was probably a poor decision based on what has happened here, or what has unfolded, because it's tied our hands to actually go after and hold these folks accountable, and it's tied our hands to not get the deliverables and the pay for the work and not the product, all of which we are all frustrated by, all of which our constituents are calling us saying, you know, if somebody lost $125 for my company, they'd be gone. So there's a high level amongst the people of the state of Arkansas of frustration. And so I'm trying to get to the 
I'm trying to get transparent. And I realize that we have other committees that are looking for solutions moving forward. However, I feel that the goal of this committee is to try to review to see what exactly happened and, and provide that accountability and transparency to the citizens of the state of Arkansas. So the time frame for me is very important to say, when did this start? And was there really enough time to do it or not? I'm not, I'm not questioning you. I'm just questioning the process here. And what were the roadblocks that kind of were put in our way, either by CMS or by, um, you know, I, I would say that CMS, federal government. And then why were these decisions made? And could we not have asked for extensions? Could we not have looked at that? And then my, my final question would be on negotiations. So after these are entered into these contracts, and do, would you say we have poor negotiators, or can we negotiate with these vendors to say, you know, we're going to make sure we get the most out of our money? Um, and I, I don't see that level of urgency from the people in our state government that were responsible for all of this because it's. You know, I see it whenever I look at our budget. It's, it's extraordinarily important to me that I'm not wasting taxpayers' money. And I'm trying very hard to say we're going to pay for what is necessary. And I just don't know if I find that same level of urgency or fiscal uh, responsibility. And that's very concerning to me. And I quite frankly don't want those people to in our state government if they have just total disregard for the taxpayers' money. So, you know, I, I would like to know, can we, how do we negotiate that? Do we need better negotiators with these contracts? Because I feel like we're not getting the most out of our money in a whole array of contracts. You know, we, we, I have been very vocal about that last week. But you know, that we need to pay for... Question, what Senator, we, please. Yes, the question is, so do we have those people that are negotiating? Do we have that ability to negotiate? those contracts and the deliverables. I, I think we need to be able to do it better. I agree. We do not do procurement as well as we could, at least within DHS. We need more capacity and more training on how to do, particularly on IT contracts. What the deliverables are, how you hold people's feet to the fire, what goes in the statement of work. And that, that's what we're trying to work with DIS, with the Office of State Procurement on how do you do that better. Because one of the recommendations you all heard in the past, of course, is We've got to get better at that. There's a real sense of urgency from my side. I mean, people are working around the clock, putting in incredible hours. Um, but to your point, if you don't start off right, you just be handicapped the rest of the way. And, and we didn't, because of the way this came about, we didn't get off to a good start, so it's been a real problem for us. Last question. Would CMS have given us the opportunity to extend that January 1, 2014, because of our RFP process. I mean, I would think that the federal government would look at the state government and say there's a legislative process, a review of contracts, of RFP, and of procurement. Would CMS have given us that deadline option so that we would not have made the decision to do a staff augmentation contract to begin with? I, I don't know whether they would or not. We also had the state law requiring us. We didn't ask for it. I don't know. We also had a, had a, had a state law requiring us to launch the independence program January 14. And we had to have this system working in order to launch that. So and the system wasn't built for that. That was a compounded and made it a little more complicated for us. Senator, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll add that to the list of the questions that we're asking CMS if they were approached and asked about that. That'd be perfect. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you. Um,